In this video, we're going to be dividing roots and powers. Um, so that's going to involve something called rationalizing. Um, hopefully you're familiar with rationalizing when dealing with square roots. It turns out we can rationalize with any power or root. There's a couple tricks for doing it. All right, so let's get going on an example here. One thing we got to remember is our quotient property. Um, so it looks something like this. If I have two numbers being divided under one radical, I can always rewrite that um, with each number being in their own radical. Now, as long as the index is the same. Um, if we start with something that looks like this and the indexes are not the same, let's say we had the square root on top and a cube root down here, we would not be able to go backwards and rewrite it in this form. It has to be the same index on top and bottom. So let's get rid of that cube root right there. So now because they're both square roots, we can go back and forth between these two forms. Whichever one helps us simplify the easiest. Another thing we want to keep in mind is if we have the nth root of a number to a power, um, as long as if a is positive, as long as a is a positive number, I'm allowed to rewrite that in a slightly different form. I'm allowed to bring that that exponent into the radical and take the nth root of it. And sometimes that may help us simplify. Other times we may need uh, to go to this form. Again, it's always whatever helps us simplify the easiest or the best. All right, so let's do some examples now. Let's divide some roots and some powers. Uh, let's say we had 7 to the 1 fifth over 7 to the 3 fifths. Um, we could rewrite it in radical form and take the fifth root of 7. And here we're taking the fifth root of 7 to the third power. But again, like I said, we're allowed to rewrite that exponent in the, under the radical there. So now, because we have the same index, we're taking the fifth root of both of them, we're allowed to rewrite that under one radical, one fifth root. Take 7 divided by 7 to the third, in which case we would subtract our exponents, and we would be left with the fifth root of 1 over 7 squared. Um, but as you can see, we still haven't gotten rid of the radical in the denominator position. We're never allowed to leave a radical on the bottom. So in this case, the quotient property didn't help us simplify this at all. So let's try something else. Again, um, we could use our quotient property of exponents. Let's try that out. So because we have the same base, I'm allowed to subtract my exponents. And that gives me 7 to the negative 2 fifths, which would translate to 1 over 7 to the 2 fifths. And if we write that in radical form, we have 1 to the fifth root of 7 squared, or 1 to the fifth root of 49, if we square 7 there. But again, we still have that radical in the bottom. Can't leave it in the denominator position. So neither one of those helped us at all. So what we have to do is rationalize, get rid of that radical in the denominator position. So let's back up here. Get rid of this right here and start back from that last step. I'm going to write it right over here. So we're starting back at 1 over the fifth root of 7 squared. And I want to get rid of this fifth root. Well, in order to get rid of a square root, we would square a radical. So in order to get rid of a fifth root, we got to make sure our exponent is to the fifth power in order to cancel the fifth root. Well, how do we do that if we have 7 squared? Well, if we multiply top and bottom by 7 to the third, I end up with the fifth root of 7 to the fifth power. 
which just gives me 7. So we got rid of the radical on the bottom. But we can never do something to the bottom without doing it to the top. We gotta keep our equations balanced, keep our fractions balanced. So I also have to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. So on the top, I get the fifth root of 7 cubed. Um, and that still translates to the fifth root of 7 cubed over 7. This is our basically our final answer. We could write it in uh, exponent form. We could say 7 to the 3 fifths power over 7. That's also acceptable. Alright, so rationalizing with higher powers other than square roots. Slightly tricky. Um, so as you can see, we, we wanted to get rid of that fifth root. We didn't just multiply it by 7 squared. That wouldn't have gotten rid of the fifth root. That's something to keep in mind. Let's try another one here. X to the 1 half over X to the 5 halves. So again, if we write it in radical form, that's the square root. That's a half power, right? So the square root of X over the square root of X to the 5th. Because we have the same index here, we could rewrite that under one radical, one square root of x over x to the fifth. And so we would get the square root of 1 over x to the fourth. But again, we never got rid of the radical in the denominator position quite yet. But if we break this back up um, into two radicals, we have the square root of 1 on top and the square root of x to the fourth. And the square root of 1 is just 1. And actually, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. x squared times x squared would give us x to the fourth. So if I'm squaring something to get x to the fourth, the root, the square root, must be one of these, x squared. You could also think of that in prime factor form. If I had the square root of x times x times x times x, since I'm taking the square root, I want pairs. I'm going to take out 1x there. And I'm going to take out 1x there and multiply them, and I still get x squared. So in this case, we did not have to rationalize because uh, our denominator is simplified all on its own. All right, let's try another example here. Let's do x squared over y to the third, all under one square root here. Well, let's break it up, because this isn't going to help us simplify. Let's use our quotient property here. Well, the square root of x squared over the square root of y to the third. Uh, we could actually simplify the square root of y to the third first, but I'm going to show you a way that we don't have to do that. It's always nice to keep things under the radical before we rationalize and then take things out after we rationalize. Um, but it also depends on the type of problem. Could be either way. So on top, let's simplify. The square root of x squared is just x. And so we still have y to the third, the square root of y to the third on the bottom. So I'm going to have to rationalize. I want to get rid of this radical. If I'm taking the square root of a cube, well, what I could do is just get something that's divisible by 2, right? So if I multiply by the square root of y to the 1 power, that would give me uh, y to the 4th. We still have our radical on the bottom. So I multiply these two, and I get y to the 4th on the bottom. And on top, I got x times the square root of y. I just got to stick them together. Well, now I can take the square root of a 4th. That would just be y times y times y times y. And there's two pairs here. So we end up getting y squared on the bottom. We still have x times square root of y on top. And that's good. We don't have a radical on the bottom anymore. We're allowed to have it on the top. So that's our most simplified form. Now we could have also gotten there from taking it right here. When I said we didn't have to simplify, we could have simplified. So we could have had x on the top 
taking the square root of y out, because we would have had uh, y times y times y, that's y cubed, taking out one of those, and we still had one under the radical. And from here, we could have rationalized and still gotten x to the square root of y on top. And we got y squared here. The square root of y squared is just y. And y times y would be y squared on the bottom. So either way, again, when dealing with these um, problems with a lot of exponents and radicals going on, there's always going to be multiple ways of solving. Let's try another one. Do x squared y to the fourth z. Let's take the square root of that on top. And on the bottom, let's do the square root of x to the fifth power. All right, so up top, we're taking pairs out. Well, we got a pair of x's, so we'll take that out of the square root. We got two pairs of y's. We got y squared coming out of the radical. But we leave behind the square root of z. On the bottom, like we did last time, we could simplify first. So we have five x's. We're going to take out one pair there, another pair there. So that's x squared. And we still have another x under the radical. So to get rid of this radical, if we rationalize and multiply top and bottom by the square root of x, then we'll get our final answer. We got x, y squared, outside. We got an x and a z inside the radical. On the bottom, we have the square root of x squared, which is x. And when we multiply it with x squared, we get x to the third on the bottom. Last step is to simplify our x's here. We have x to the 1 over x to the third, so this guy's going away. We're left with y squared, xz under the radical, and on the bottom we only have two x's now, so there's our final answer. All right, one last trick I want to show you. There is a way to simplify rationalizing. Let's say we had one over, uh, let's see, let's say two to the third. And we want to take the square, no, let's take the fourth root of that. Um, I could multiply top and bottom by the fourth root of 2 cubed to undo it. But then I would be left with 2 cubed on the bottom and the fourth root of 2 cubed on top. Um, and then I would have to put that as 8. But... If I go a different direction, if I rationalize differently here, um, I know that I need a fourth root. So if I really just multiply by 2 to get 2 to the fourth, then I have simplified my rationalization there. So on the bottom I have uh, 2 to the fourth to the fourth root over the square root of 2. And on the bottom that simplifies to the square root of 2 over just 2. So we would have to keep going up here to get to this answer, the most simplified answer. Um, or, rather than rationalizing by this large number here, if we just simplify our rationalization to get um, our lowest, our lowest uh, power, I guess, our lowest number dealing with that power, we want a fourth. So if we just get a fourth, then we don't have to simplify as much at the end. And I'll continue to show um, that kind of a trick with some larger problems in the next video.